Welcome to a One Piece YK2K collab with me, your host, YK2K, and it's a special One Piece episode today. Mr. Sunday, care to uh, introduce yourself? Uh, obviously, my name is Sides, and I'm here to join YK for this, hopefully, not a debate, but an agreement on some of the arcs we have listed. Yes, this, we are we are yeah. One Piece fans, okay? Yes, sir. We, I, I've I've done a lot of tier lists on my own, and I thought, yeah, let's do let's do let's add some people in. We have to tier them from uh, S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier. Knowing One Piece, I don't think anything is going to go into D, but we shall see after discussion. East Blue, your take to this. East Blue as a whole, like yeah, it so doesn't it, break down anything. Romance the one to Twin Peaks. Oh damn. So my initial gut reaction is given A. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it, like it's an it's A. It's the prologue of the story, and especially yeah. where we are now, how like important it is. Would you want to give it S? Nah, it's, it's definitely A. I can't give it S because there's a lot of. Like, what, what's, what's missing from it? Oh, what would the? Um, I don't think anything's missing from it. It's a great setup. There's there's a lot out there that actually surpasses it by quite a lot. So and obviously there isn't a ranking above S right now. So we're just gonna have to leave it as A. As A opening. Opening prologue to like a great saga, a story compared to other like giant other fantasy stories, stories, other shonen stories. It would you say is. it's the best? Introducing its world, introducing its characters, like East Blue really is. Like, yeah, it really is good. But if it was S, you wouldn't have a lot of these fans saying it took them a while to get into One Piece. To be honest, an S tier, an S tier introduction should uh, capture most readers straight away. I know most of us who watch One Piece obviously think. It'd be an S, but I don't know. For that reason, I'd say it's an A. It's still solid, but it's it's not perfect. Okay, I'll take it. And a lot of people say uh, the Arlon Park arc was where people got hooked. I disagree. I think the Baratier is really where like it shined. I, I was one example. Like I didn't that first couple of episodes. I was like, this is so wacky. I'm, I don't like this. So I didn't watch One Piece until like a couple years after. Um, it's very very wacky and absurd. Like very very wacky for an anime that compared to like again Naruto, Bleach, Death Note and stuff in that era. So I give it an A. Okay, cool. Drum Island. Oh, Chopper. So this place. Uh, I don't know. This place after that. Yeah. Whiskey P. My initial reaction is like a high tier B or low tier A. I think this is including it's this is including Chopper's backstory, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything, because you hear Blackbeard's name mentioned for the first time, the D initial mentioned for the first time, and I swear we hear about Ace as well. Ace is like he right came here. before them. Chopper's backstory Ooh. was amazing. The comedy was amazing. I still like Chopper's. I don't know what 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 do you think it should be? I'll give it high tier A. High tier A. So you think it's better than East Blue? Oh, I mean low high tier B. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I'm r- I'm around the same opinion as well. It's not as action packed. It's more like a heartfelt story than against something like marine food or anything yeah there's nothing um, i can't lie we're agreeing very easily yeah i, I thought you know why because abdul's not here abdul is not here oh damn you're watching this missing out he, he, he would have been kicking us for a lot of, <laughs> a lot of our future opinions honestly my favorite part favorite line of the art because you know when chopper joins and then uh yeah luffy's like oh i thought you were emergency food i was like oh god oh, d- <laughs> Help me. that was funny but i'd say my favorite part was um he said something about not joining like he was given some sort of like little sub story as to why he shouldn't join and become a pirate and then Luffy was like, he doesn't care, just join. Uh, Luffy wanted him on his crew, and then Chopper was trying to make an excuse not to come, like he was belittling himself. And then Luffy was like, he doesn't care, and he started shouting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that that was definitely my favorite scene of that whole arc right there. The Barok works <laughs> saga, which I'm assuming is Alabasta. Yeah, yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, go for it. No, is it like Alabasta as a whole? I, I want to give it a. Why would you put it in? Uh, no, I feel like the pacing for that arc was perfect, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I know a lot of people would disagree. Basically, like the build up for it was great. Crocodile was the first major, major oh. threat. You meet Ace for the first time. Oh yeah, true. Get introduced to the Poneglyphs the arc. Yeah, and then we'll see Nico Robin. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. And then you you get all the one on ones. Yes. Like Luffy actually loses properly for the first time. Um, he loses what like three like three times. Main one was when he when he gets stabbed by crocodile like in the desert pit. Yeah, so he gets stabbed, and then Nico Robin, I think. Yeah, she saves him in it, and then that that's that's what sparked my interest about her. She seemed like a very interesting character at that point. The intro of uh, Bon Clay. Is that right. when you see him Bonchon. for the first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he hopped onto the ship. Yeah, and then Luffy was like, Welcome, you're free to join. <laughs> <laughs> and he was calling Havoc. That was great. Next is Skypea. Controversial. Very, very oh, controversial. Very important to the story from what we see now. But uh, that's not going to change the rating for the arc, in my opinion. Yeah, I would give it an A still. A minus. I, I re- like, I'm, I'm like one of the few people that very, very enjoyed Skypea. Yeah. 
Yeah, I watched the anime. I, I enjoyed like the entire like run through it. It felt like oh, okay. a mystery, like a mystery adventure. Nah, there was there was too many dragged out parts, man. There was a lot of comedy in it. I don't know. They'll just take forever. Like there was that one scene with um, Sanji, Luffy, and Usopp. And then they just had that one fight with some irrelevant character. It was one of Eno's uh, lackeys. Yeah. The guy with that. Was it was it a bubble devil fruit or something? And then it was just all over the place. And then you have the Luffy in the stomach of a snake at one point. The only interesting part I'd say was uh, Robin doing her own thing later on in the story. But yeah, I don't know. But, but, that, that might be like a low B for me. A D? No, no, no. Low B. Oh, okay. Actually, I might give it a C, you know. No, a C is like a boy. A high C. Class. Yeah, yeah. I'm not okay, giving it. I'll nah, give it to you. I'm, I'm fine with this. Enel versus Luffy. Yeah. Sanji's like, thanks you, thanks for the light moment. <laughs> Everyone versus Enel. Luffy versus Enel. Zoro versus Enel. Wiper versus Enel. The mystery of the world. The fact that there's like there's a flipping like ocean above the ocean of clouds. The the mystery of the Merry. That you you actually see like the spirit of the Merry for the first time. Yeah. I never oh, it happens in that arc. Yeah. Remember like the the ghost like Luffy uh, Usopp sees a ghost. I only remember that part from. Water 7, when he was speaking to Frankie. Right. And they have a flashback of Usopp speaking to the Merry. But I completely forgot it happened in uh, uh, Skype here. Yeah, I completely forgot as well. I was like, what is there? What is going on? And then they like left it and I was like, okay, that was... It, I just felt like the arc was all over the place, man. That's fair, but, that's fair. I mean, it is what it is. It had its, it had its good moments. Cool. B minus is then. The Davy backfire. This includes like the uh, <laughs> Aokiji encounter. I don't know. It... it, it, it it's a very different arc compared to the, all the other arcs we've seen. So, it, I can't lie, I enjoyed watching it. Same. I know a lot of people just disliked it, I wanted to skip it. But I don't know, it was, it was a very fun concept watching it. I would give it a C. It could have been cut a couple of episodes. In the back fight, I was like, okay, hurry up and send it. I did like the fight between Foxy and Luffy. No great. way, Afro Luffy. Yeah. Bro, he's, that's one of my favourite designs, like, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the concept no, that, design, that, that design was hard, but... Yeah, they definitely dragged it out. The concept was there. It was very interesting. Very interesting to watch, but like you said, they did drag it out. What would you rate it then? I'm going to give it a C. A C? Comparing it to like all the other arcs in the series, I think I enjoyed it the least. I feel like we ain't being as harsh as we, as we should be with these arcs. I think, because you know what, because we haven't got to the big stuff yet, so we'll move on to the big stuff right, now. Okay. So we have Water 7, which will be our first right. S tier. Water 7 is S tier, I don't think. Whenever I talk about Water 7, I always like put it together with the Annie's Lobby. No, yeah, on this list it's pretty much the same. They put the ox together. Okay, if it's together, it's definitely yes. Yeah. Without a doubt. Annie's Lobby by itself, actually, is my favourite arc, so I think like, Water 7 is like the build up and Annie's Lobby is like the climax. I see it as put together as one arc. I don't really see it as a separate arc. Deep in it, you, the Franklin yeah. family's even, even, the even if it was separated, what would you rank Annie's Lobby by itself? I'd probably still give it an, like an A plus or S, like borderline. I, I think by itself for me, I'd still have it as S easily. All the, I remember all the power ups and obviously Sogi King, so there's an obvious bias there for me. Series. Luffy vs Luchi. Luffy vs Luchi. You have Zoro vs Kaku. That's top tier. You have like the oh, Rainbow Lobby. You have the Buster Call. One of the first arcs where we see Sanji not willing to fight a woman and he got turned into a bar of soap. Abdul, if you're watching, your guy, so your guy got turned into a bar of soap. Thriller Bark, the Halloween arc, the Scooby Doo arc of story. <laughs> Honestly, Thriller Bark was the first arc where I was skipping through episodes. That was me as well. I, I was skipping quite a few. It, it got to the point where I, I didn't know why I was watching the arc. I know it was a lazy antagonist. I know that it was it was an uh, the devil fruit concept was very good though yeah. in terms of him controlling shadows or whatever it seemed like a very gag type of art Luffy receiving all those shadows turning into that machine or whatever the you could say it's kind of tempoed where the beginning's very strong with Brooke and it ends very strong with Zoro Kuma and Brooke again and Brooke's backstory man Brooke's that backstory as well everything in that was definitely yeah, insane. Like the Ryuma fight but that's, yeah. that's all I can think of when I see exactly in my opinion anyway we have to be harsh though man <laughs> I feel like we have to put something in D on rewatch thriller box a lot more interesting because like you know like all the foreshadowed events that happens again kuma yep. ryuma wano kaido moria no, but like it's, it's one of those things where like it's an acquired taste if you're a fan of like halloween the halloween aesthetic you'll like thriller bark but it's, it's still like the pacing was probably the worst in the entire series uh compared to another arc that we shall get to later speaking of a top tier arc we have sabaudi archipelago and i'm going to probably say it straight Sabori Archipelago is probably S tier, the introduction oh. of Admiral Kizaru, the introduction of the supernovas, the iconic Luffy versus uh, punching, uh, was it Charles? S tier. Oh, I, I don't know, I, I'd give that an S purely because I'd say it's the most rewatchable arc out there. Yeah. 
it's literally the most rewatchable one. So Baori Archipelago goes like my favorite location in the series. <laughs> it's a fun fair. It's a giant forest. Yeah, yeah. It's the borderline. Oh, like, the red it line. had it had everything, and then it had the Kizaru entrance. When Kizaru smokes. Oh, oh yeah, that was. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now nah, his his entrance as well though. Him on a cannonball, just yes. flying in. Bro, I, I still get oh, chills when like I think he legit like point blank kicked Freak in the face. The worst part was he was trolling. He was like, uh I, he said something like he, he was scared of them or something, but in a very sarcastic tone. And then he proceeded to demolish every single one of them. Yeah. Laws introduced. Kids introduced. Ray. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh. You know, you meet him for the first time. The first time we see Conqueror's Haki being used. And of course, like, again, the most, probably the most emotional moment in the entire series is when, like, Luffy has a massive breakdown. When Kuma wastes every... I remember watching that and then Jared was telling me he was watching that as a kid. And I think I think he said he cried when he watched that episode. Who wouldn't be crying? I actually see Luffy broken for the first time. Would you put it above Water 7 and, and his lobby? No. They're, they're very similar for me. We have to rank them though. If it's Water 7 and Eni's Lobby combined, it's just below. It's Eni's Lobby and Water 7 separate, it's above both of them. I think it really matters where I place them. Yeah. They get right next to each other on the, on the tier list. Yeah, I really wouldn't mind which is above the other. Well, next, we have Marine for you. I mean, I love the art, but I feel like it's extremely overhyped. Was that because you went into it knowing what the arc was about? I don't know. It was it was a nice introduction of each of the commanders of the Whitebeard Pirates, the Admirals. I, I I feel like I just wanted to see more of some of the characters actually portray some of their powers. If it was like a war arc, surely we would have seen like more more attacks being used by some of the OG uh, characters. Mm -hmm. I know the White Beard had a lot to show off, but certain characters like the White Beard uh, commanders, like two of them blocked Mihawk's attacks. Yeah, yeah, Josie, right? Was it, is his name Vista? Vista, yeah, yeah, he blocked. So we saw like little snippets of these characters fighting. Marco, Marco definitely did his thing. Didn't the White Beard commanders lose to the Black Beard? And we have no idea what happened to these characters, True. whether they've disappeared or whatever. So that was like missed out potential in a lot of these characters. I mean, hopefully most of them are still alive and we can see what they do later. Okay, okay, cool. I have a special place with uh, Marineford. Like, Marineford was the one arc before I knew before, like, I even watched the One Piece, like in high school. Okay. So everyone was hyping about Marineford, Whitebeard and Blackbeard. I was like, I don't know who, why, why, they, why is their pirates named that? So I knew about Marineford going into the series. I was always, like, hyped about it. The arc started, my expectations were met, if not still superseded. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, was, I can definitely like, see I that. I think because you know why? Because I I came up watching Naruto. I think that was the reason. Oh. I think that okay. really really like helped with the uh, pushed Marine Ford for yeah, me yeah. because I think Marine Ford is how you do like a war arc. Definitely. I feel like I feel like, like the Naruto were uh, trying to just stretch it out as much as possible. Yeah. One Piece kept it concise. I, I feel like the reason why the war arc in Naruto looked so stretched out was because they started introducing a bunch of antagonists. There was more on the line than the Marine Ford arc. So I mean, I feel like the Marine Ford arc isn't really like a Actual war. It's more like, it's I'm like saying. a battle, pretty much. Just one yeah, battle. it's pretty much a battle. So, would you put it S or A? Uh, it's an S. Yeah, but like, the, in, I'll give it S tier just because, again, like the, the clutch moments, the shanks. Oh, oh my! I, 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 that thought didn't occur to me as well. Yeah, yeah. black beard at the black end, but he did to white beard. Bro, black beard clutching the the two fruits. It's been buggy. You have like Luffy jump diving from the sky with his like prison break prisoners. Yeah. And then him in front of three of the admirals. The admirals. That is probably one of the best like panels I've seen. Then you have like the Roger Ace like connection. I can't like I like more of the the info drops in the arc than the actual battles itself. I feel like that's like everyone with One Piece. <laughs> Just give yeah. me the info. The Just give me the info. I remember uh, I was watching one of the episodes and I texted you. Right. It was um, Roger and Whitebeard having that talk. It was a flashback. And then I asked you, because uh, it cut off, they were having a conversation about what the will of D meant. And I was at that point and I was and I was asking you, spamming you. I was like, uh, do, do you end up finding out what, what the conversation was and what the will of D is? Oh, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to this day, we still don't know. We do not know. Oh, no. Oh, we are moving on to Fishman Island. Certain YouTubers really like changed my, I guess, perspective on Fishman Island. I didn't like it at all. I, I didn't really care about like, oh. Holly Jones or Van Decken. She know she was annoying. Like, what opinion did you change then? I think just like the undertone of like the entire arc. I like the fact that yeah. Holly Jones, you might see him as just like a bland, generic villain, but like it, it's very, I guess, based on real life. The fact that like he was pretty much just brainwashed into him hating humans. And you know, there was like, that iconic line I'm... where like he was like, why do you hate these humans? And he's like, I just, I don't have a reason to just hate them. Like, I, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't. Yeah care about it at first but when i rewatched that like episode i was like oh but, like it hit i was like okay i get it now i get it so, but it, it did kind of, it did kind of stem from the backstory especially after tisha tiger's death 
I think that's what changed him the most. But uh, yeah, I don't. I think that just gave him the idea that humans can't be trusted. And the same as Arlong. I kind of like Woody Jones as a character when I started to realize the power he was using kind of represented his ideals. Oh, uh, yeah, he was all right. I feel like I was gonna hate for saying this, but the thing that I, that I hated the most in the arc wasn't even the plot. It was literally just Sanji. Oh yes! Oh my God, bro. That, that nosebleed was, that was the guy. First time I was genuinely angry. I was getting angry. I was like, nah. wait, what? Oof. I, I I thought after that arc he'd be irredeemable. Like I had him at the bottom of the bottom. I mean, he came in clutch at Whole Cake Island, so he, he's definitely top three. C tier for that alone. Uh, Fist on Island. Yeah. Yeah, throw that in D tier. Above or below Davy back? We're not gonna violate it like that, man. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, bear in mind, like, you know, they, they, they mentioned Big Mom at the end. Jim Bay joins the crew. I like the whole, like, uh, the portrayal of discrimination. The fishmen and the human. They try to get along, but obviously there'll be those that take advantage of the situation. Yes, that's done very well. An, very underrated, very an underrated character in that arc was um, Shiro Hoshi's mom. Bro, that she was oh, no sure. recognition. Yeah, definitely. No one already speaks about her, but yeah. she was definitely good. Like, Oden pretty much takes the limelight now when it comes to flashbacks. Uh, but I think, yeah, the Queen Otohime definitely deserves some, some limelight as well. Um, I'll give it C. Yeah, I feel like yeah, a low C, high D. It's around there. Punk Hazard. I remember Abdul saying something about... Oh, he loved Punk uh, Well, where did he rank it? The point where he said it was his top three arc. But obviously that changed after Wana. It's, it's set up. But, for the setup. For a setup, it was uh, how many episodes was it? Yeah, it was, it was around forty episodes. But oh, yeah, it was, it was definitely dragged out, man. You know it did not like, need to be forty yeah, episodes. You know, bro, I'd rather wish. I wish they went to the Lightning Island instead. Punk has it just served uh, as a as a plot purpose. So they go back, and then we realize the island's uh, environment yeah. was like that because of obviously Akainu and RPG. I like the arc, obviously Virgo, uh, Monet. Both of them are very good characters. The Yeti Cool Brothers. The Yeti Cool Brothers. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, now, oh, wait, wait, I said, wait, wait, what happened to them? I have no idea. <laughs> but, uh, um, Punk has yeah. a lot of memorable moments. You know, Caesar yeah. Clown, Haki's mm-hmm. introduced, Virgo, uh, Law, the whoever Joker, Joker's revealed. You see Doflamingo flying over, and then he uh, goes on top of uh, Smoker, and yeah. then you see Alkiji come right behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pause. Right that sounded mad. Okay, they, uh, they actually gave more lime like yeah. to Nami in this arc. You have Zoro versus Monet. You have you have no. You yeah. have mate. No, no, no. The best you have Chopper on top of Law as a hat. That, 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 that would be your favorite. Sanji cooking food for everyone at the end. Sanji and I think food. I don't know if it was cooking Odin for them or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. We we see Momonosuke refusing to eat. Oh, the foreshadowing. When I was watching that scene, I I was just hating Momonosuke. I was like, why don't you just eat the food, man? Vago was. That, that, well, I that. think Vago was the, probably the most intimidating part of like he was more intimidating than Caesar overall. One hundred percent. Caesar was just kind of cracked to be honest. His double fruit power was insane. I'll put it low tier B. Oh, yeah. I think I overall am more than Fishman Island. Dressrosa. You know, you know. The problem is right. I don't. I'm pretty sure they uh they overused the uh, Rebecca flashback in the anime, so it wasn't as stretched out was like in the manga. But I, I I I'm not capping. I think I saw Rebecca's flashback and uh, her dad's flashback a good 16 times. Such a big like detriment to the. If it's if we're ranking it based on like the anime's adaptation, it's not an S. It's an A. Okay. But if we're basing it off the manga, I assume they they cut it down heavily. Compared to what the anime did, G- given a uh, low S, okay. purely because I feel like the so part that happens. carried the most was um. There's just, just so much happens like overall. You have a tournament, yeah. within, You have a tournament arc within an arc. Uh, um, a raid with the green bit with Doflamingo, uh, Tora. Tora's Tora. reveal as well. You see, when I think about, it, there's a lot going on here as well. Um, Your go Uso. Oh, the, the oh arc, yes, Corazon's flashback. Yo, that yeah. Corazon and Lo. Right? <laughs> yes. yes. After that point, I had Corazon as like, I'd say around my top eight characters. Would you put it above Marineford? I'm conflicted. There was a lot of info drops in Marineford and a lot of teasers for the characters' powers. And at the same time, you have Dressrosa. It just so much going on. You have Sabu returning as well. I don't think you've talked yes. about that. Oh my god. I feel like the anime adaptation just ruined uh, Dressrosa. <laughs> I wish Karim was... I-, I have them very close. So, is getting a lot of love right now. Especially within the story. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. It was the arc that I got up to date watching One Piece. So I have a very special place 
for it. I, I would give it A. The way it won, it's, uh, it's paced very, very well. The information yeah. review throughout the entire series, the, the Rise of a Safe moment, the, whole, the, the fact that Zoe's that, a better than You meet Dog and Cat. And you also get to see the voice of all things for the first time, I'm pretty sure. Where you finally see Ninja Riser. I remember all, all the characters are getting hyped about meeting him. This is going to be like the Kakashi. The characters I know in Oda was completely out of left field and I was baffed, I was like this is no way. It was all the male characters fanboying as they were going up Zao, uh, Luffy, Frankie. And the, the narrative references, I don't even know, can you do Shadow Clones? Yes. I like, yes! Yes, oh, I, I'm, I think they're all expecting him to do some sort of ninjutsu. And then they, they all find out he's a fraud oh, and he has a big face and they all get all get sad. But, uh, but yeah. his, his character de design is definitely one of my favourite. Oh, it's a very funny design. It's the first arc that pretty much sets up the ending of the story. Mr. Jack. Oh yes, the first oh, one yes. billion reveal. I I'm gonna put it the highest rank of A. First time where the show has to go into an arc and there's no boss fight. But the amount of info drops. I'm, we, we got a lot of info drops that arc. It was very different. Now we forgot to speak about um, Sanji. Yes, the Sanji reveal as well. The fact that like his bounty is only alive. Yeah, we're, we're really breezing through this. <laughs> okay, so... I mean, because there's no Abdul to argue with. There's no here's Abdul. Abdul. <laughs> um, I, th I, feel like, I feel like most of our opinions are pretty much the same, to be honest. For... He's, he's, the, he's the oil to our water. Basically. We don't mix. Uh, Whole Kick Island is well, one of my favourites. The part I remember that did drag was the beginning bit when Luffy was in the forest fighting... Cracker. Other than that, I really enjoyed it. It was Sanji's year. You can see it's like the Disneyland aesthetic arc with like the candy, like how they meet the Germa for the first time. You see Yonji, okay, yeah. Reju, putting very underrated character as well. She deserves very more very love. Um, a split personality. No one really talks about that. Yes. Um, and also her potential. Putting like a top tier character, but no one like talks about her, so it's, it's so jarring. Uh, I like the fact that again it subverts expectations. The fact that everyone went in thinking Luffy's gonna take on Big Mom. It does, but doesn't. And that Katakuri was the main boss. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like if if Big Mom was the main antagonist, everything would have gone left. At that point in time, she was just way too strong. There had to have been like some sort of reason for her not. Uh, taking the fight seriously, and, I like the fact that they, they and obviously that was saved her for Wano. The underrated aspect of all this was um, the, the the Straw House actually planning on how to make it making her go crazy, which was uh, getting Brooke to smash one of the pictures. Uh, Brooke, bro, Brooke. But uh, Brooke, was Brooke was definitely the MVP of the arc. So he he broke the picture. He stepped with big. One. I don't think it was him stealing the the poneglyph. Yeah, it was a red. From I remember, yeah, the way he just pulls it out of his skull, like. It was just a simple task. Mm -hmm. Luffy versus then... Sanji, right? You had the Jamma revealed. Again, I'm a massive... Also, like, I love Power Rangers. So the fact that a lot of the Jamma are basically like a Power Rangers parody kingdom. Yeah. Of, like, the Sentai genre. Yeah. I love it. An uh, underrated character is um, Katakuri's uh, older sister. After I, I was hating her literally throughout the whole arc. I was like, this is the, uh, one of the most annoying characters. But then after that Katakuri flashback of them two getting bullied or whatever, and then her being the reason he finally takes a stand for his family and becomes the character he is. And at the same time, her Delphi ability is one of the most OP things I've seen. It's definitely a great arc. Where would you rank it? Now, now that I think about it more, and you also have the Jimbei at the end staying behind. I, st I, st I st think out of all the Yonko, Big Mom's the weakest character. It, it, it was definitely done on purpose. Because yeah. if she was saying, I don't think they, they would have left alive. We'll leave the, we'll, we'll leave the, the power scaling for another, another day. day. Yeah. We haven't spoken about Sanji's backstory. Oh, okay, yeah. Probably probably the best backstory in all the Shrew Hats. If you would agree. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, was, it was definitely one, I'd say, a top five backstory for me. The reason why he began to cook in the first place, mm -hmm. I think it was because of him giving his not so well cooked food to his mum. Yeah. And obviously, you have her lying to him saying it's, you know, <laughs> a great piece of work. And, and then, then it kind of ties back to, it, it ties back to Luffy. When he eats the, the soggy food, Sanji oh. brings back to him. Yeah, perfect parallels there. And then he's like, oh, it's perfect. Even though Sanji's like, they're saying good food. A very emotional moment watching it. Hockey Garden, where'd you rank it? Uh, S, easily. Dressrosa? Uh, yeah, I might have to. Yeah. Even though that, that Corazon law backstory was oh. was perfect. I totally forgot about that. I'm, oh, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think I can put it above anymore. But I just, I have Dressrosa edging oh, it just, just yeah, a tiny cool. bit. Tempoling Wano and Hockey Garden, the reverie. The reverie was very short. Reverie. But it had a lot of impact. Uh, I think it was just to, to give an idea yeah. on how the world was going on. Basically. And I'm pretty sure the reverie was split into to two pieces. Yeah. 
and it led to more mysteries than actual actual mystery. So it's a high, it's a high B low A. I don't know. You have the Gorosei there. You have yes. The I remember. I remember them them talking about the throne and how it represented equality and that no one sits on the the throne. And then I fully believed that as I was like, oh, okay, you know, the government don't seem so bad. Maybe there are a few odd pots in the the marine. When I saw Emu walking up the stairs, I was like, damn, this is a different different story. Yeah. The Marines definitely have not the Marines specifically, but the world government has to be taken down. Especially after we, I'm pretty sure we get to see uh, Tabo and some of the commanders of the, the Revolutionary Army. And then you have that one girl, I can't remember her name, the one uh, whose dull fruit ability is to um, cause a rebellion, not a rebellion, but she like can't a. Influence people. Cool. Yes, yeah. basically. The, so the story of that town was um, they. I, I think it was they couldn't afford to pay the 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 money needed for marine protection, and then you start to realize the amount of corruption the world government are uh, indulged in. Hands to uh, a bunch of slaves down below just pushing the floors they're on. That arc definitely, in my in my opinion, changed the the world of One Piece. A lot of a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. High tier B seems okay. high tier B. Uh, yeah. Basically. Does it need any introductions? Probably. Well, we do agree that this is the best arc in the series, right? Wano itself. It's S tier. <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no debate. <laughs> it is. No oh, in flashback, that alone just makes it S, and everything else is just. Yeah, the the old the old and flashback. When I was watching it, I was like, damn, he's easily one of my favorite characters. Yeah. That flashback was insane, and the fact that. It gave us a lot of uh, moments we needed mm -hmm. as a fan base. I remember everyone wanted to see how strong Roger and Whitebeard were in their primes. Then we we, we actually get to see them clash. We get to see Odin clash as well with some a young Marco and Rayleigh face off. But I don't know. I, it was it, Wano itself was a good arc, especially like the raid itself. Not the one time. Usually Luffy when he goes to Island, his main intention isn't to I don't know free the people in a sense. It's more so just to do what needs to be done or whatever, yeah. or get rid of an antagonist in the way. In this arc, even though the, the main alliance between Law and Luffy was to take down Kaido, he found a whole nother reason to take him down, and it was specifically because of, um, obviously those aces tied to the land, and you also have Utama, who pretty much influenced Luffy, showing him how bad the state was. And then you also see on the other side, Zoro going around Wano, and meeting uh, the little girl who was affected by the the small fruit, and so yeah, the Wano was definitely a dark arc. At the same time, oh, it, it it didn't do justice for a lot of the straw hats because obviously you have my guy Usopp, very useless in that arc. It it did finally give us what we needed to see, which was obviously a Robin finally getting her one on one. Because I don't think prior to that moment with uh, Black Maria, she didn't she didn't have any 1v1 with anyone whatsoever. And so I remember everyone saying, okay, now Odin needs to actually give her a one-on-one. -on -one. And he did give it to her, and he actually exceeded our expectations with that fight. Robin was good. I'd say, um, yeah, like, I, I'll give it Ben to the doubt, just because there's so many characters. So I, I'll give it a pass. I still think this is the best arc yeah. down in the entire series. Four years of a yeah. story on this island. So yeah. So I guess we are, we are done. That was pretty quick. That was obviously because uh, not really anything to argue about. Nice. We're on the one the same wavelength. We'll do the uh, countdown quickly. So S tier we have Wano and Water Seven, Saboria Capelago, Marine Ford, Dressrosa, Hokik Island. Then we have okay. A tier Zo, Alabasta, East Blue, B tier Reverie, Drum, Skypea, Punk Hazard, D tier Fishman Island, Day Back Fight, and then D Thriller Bark. I don't yeah. think this is a controversial list. I think this is pretty like. Silly. I feel like I feel like I don't know. Should all those arcs be on ST? Is it like oh, that yes. perfect? Seven, yes. Sabodi, yes. Marine food, I could drop. Nah, Marine should Mar 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 stay in there purely because of the amount of info drops we got. And then Dress Rose and, uh, and Whole Cake. I could drop, I could generally drop both the Dress Rose and Whole Cake, but. Nah, I have not agree with that, but. I know a lot of people would say there's too many S tier, but there's. We bro, One Piece, the, the, he writes it very, very well. I can't well, well, yeah, uh, there's a reason why One Piece is up. Well, I don't know if it's your favorite. I assume it's your favorite. Pretty, yeah, pretty, 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 can't really do much about this. Okay, so yeah, that was our One Piece tier arc list. 
on Tear Maker. Thank you for Mr. Sunday. For Thank coming. you, boss. Do you guys agree yeah. with our list? Comment down below and let us know. Uh, what would you change? What would you tear if you were in our positions? See you guys next time. Peace. Ciao.